there's one city which is basking in the glory of a housing market going in one direction that's up is Hyderabad. The highest percentage growth in sales and a steady price increase over the last five years is what has made this city stand out. Our question on today's property show, how long will the party continue? Nanda Kishore, MD Ramki Estates, Srinivas Reddy, ED of Raja Pushpa Properties and Veera Babu, Managing Director, Hyderabad Kushman and Wakefield will answer the buy or sell questions we have for Hyderabad. Also on our property explainer, the hotly debated loading factor in real estate, which is the most confusing one for home buyers to understand. Jeshri Naveen Chandra from Zeus Law will tell us how can you calculate the load and why two flats, both at 50,000 rupees per square feet, are not a straightforward comparison. All right. On to Hyderabad first. We've actually got amongst the top five developers, two of them. So, Mr. Nandakishore, I'm going to first come to you. Hyderabad uh, had a lot of catching up to do after the political tussle between Telangana and Andhra Pradesh was settled. And I'm seeing that both in the prices and the demand for homes. But do you think that this is uh, this rate of growth is now going to be moderated? I think, first of all, we have to understand that there was a lull in the Hyderabad uh, residential market for close to eight to nine years, uh, starting from 2009 onwards till 2018. And it's only from 2018 that we have seen a lot of traction in the residential. So this is a, this a, there was a lot of catch up to do, as you rightly pointed out. That is number one. The second part, what was also fueling the demand is that during the COVID time and post-COVID, uh, what has happened is people have Wake up, woken up to the fact that they need to improve their quality of living. And this is why they are looking at gated communities, they are looking at you know better uh, quality of uh, housing. And that is another factor which is propelling the demand. We are also seeing uh, uh, another uh, segment of demand, which is the upgrading of uh, the uh, residences from you know smaller units to larger units. Uh, uh, this is the third thing. Apart from this, I think there is a fundamental belief in the Hyderabad story which is what is driving the entire growth. And if everyone believes Hyderabad has got it going for itself in terms of uh, uh, the infrastructure, in terms of the employment generation, in terms of political stability, and all the other you know, uh, associated, uh, 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 I would say, uh, strong points okay. of Hyderabad. Uh, it, these are some of the reasons which are uh, uh, pushing the demand. Now, the question whether will it sustain, I think even today, uh, the prices in Hyderabad are relatively lesser than many of the tier two towns uh, across the country. So arbitrage is playing uh, its game. We are seeing a lot of people, you know, uh, people from the northern part of the country, western part of the country who come to Hyderabad and find the prices are uh, very, very reasonable for the product that is on offering, for the location that are on offering. So that is also another major factor. So the pricing is still... I would say very much reasonable and that is what is making people to invest money. I, I would and agree with you. I, I, I'll come back to you, uh, sir. I'm, I'll agree with you on the pricing though. I was looking at the price movement charts and, you know, from 4,090 rupees per square feet in 2016, despite that lull that you're talking about, if I see the prices today blended, and this is blended for both affordable housing and premium housing, they've now come up to just 5,800 rupees per square feet. So it's not a very large number. In fact, I don't think you can buy almost anything in any of the other larger cities at that price. And now look at what is the price that you will pay a blended rate for homes which are under 50 lakh rupees in Hyderabad, you will pay 3,800 rupees per square feet and for premium apartments which go up to 2 crores, it's still around 5,900 rupees per square feet. So, uh, Mr. Reddy, the thing is that is it likely to become unaffordable very soon because, you know, the rates have risen quite substantially in the last 3 to 4 years. Uh, now that the catch-up has happened, do you believe going forward, like all other cities, you will only see a 5 to 6% or maybe not even that much price rise. What's your own sense in terms of the demand and supply? Uh, based on the demand and supply, Manisha, I think uh, we, we are still uh, in a very good area for the next two to three years, I feel, in Hyderabad. Uh, comparing the prices, uh, what we have in Hyderabad to uh, compare with Bangalore and Chennai, we are at least 20% less than them. 
So I would see in the near uh, short term future, if it's one year and a long term after three years also, I feel Hyderabad as a way to go in prices also. And uh, considering the infrastructure that we have in Hyderabad, the, uh, the education sector, the health sector, and uh, overall uh, the culture uh, that Hyderabad has, anyone who comes to the city in six months to one year would like to have their home, uh, their kids uh, grow up in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. And uh, these factors will keep Hyderabad being the bright spot in the country for uh, at least five to ten years, I feel with the kind of infrastructure that we have uh, and most parts right. of Hyderabad. So, so sir, developing. from two years, you're saying five to ten years. Well, it, there is still a lot of room in terms of the price movement between, yeah. and the price arbitrage, like you said, between Chennai and Hyderabad and Bangalore and Hyderabad. Okay, Veera Babu, you know, the story of Hyderabad is, of course, also like a Bengaluru or a Chennai. Chennai, of course, has lost the race a little bit. Is very closely linked to India's growth as the GCC captive center for IT and ITES in India. Uh, but in the last, we will all have to agree that uh, there has been a lull in leasing. We don't know when people are going to come back to office. Uh, especially the IT companies are not giving us any clear-cut answers. Do you believe that that could be a dampener or, or you don't think so? So, Manish, I think I don't think so that's going to be dampened. If you look at the fundamentals uh, of the leasing from a long-term standpoint, it's still intact. So, I fully agree that there's uncertainty on the short term. So, that probably lost not more than three to six months uh, subject to third wave, what, what are the seeing predicting or people are predicting it. So, from a long-term story is intact and the, the way the uh, Mr. Srinivas or Mr. Nandakishore has mentioned, so the, the acceptance of the city as a people who are coming from outside is much, much stronger high. Uh, given the very strong and robust infrastructure, the continual development of infrastructure and the committee is also emphasizing to create more growth corridors. Especially yeah, Babu, I'm from going to ask you a very simple question. The last time I went to Gachipoli, I was stuck in the traffic for almost, I was crawling in the traffic in the high-tech city. All right. So, so what has changed? I mean, this was, of course, pre-COVID that I'm talking about. All three of you have mentioned infrastructure. Can you give us some substantial, uh, you know, physical infrastructure which is making the city more livable? And as it expands, it is going to remain one of the most, uh, you know, sought after by home buyers. So, the, to quickly to adapt the uh, first point is that SRDP is the plan which government was uh, initiated a couple of years back, and they've. Uh, they use this pandemic and able to complete uh, a lot of link roads, which is uh, consisting to the like, especially Madhapur and Gauchipoli, Southwestern Corridor. They completed a couple of flyovers. They added new roads. There are almost about seven, eight link roads are created to, to decongest the, the IT corridors. From a growth perspective, they're doing phenomenally uh, on the infrastructure side. So again, they're doing airport expansion also, they're doing it. And there's ex another important point for Hyderabad is that outer ring road, uh, where it just... Anybody who's on the stretch will be able to exit and uh, go around the city to other parts of the town much faster than any other city. I think that's the best advantage, especially for the IT quarters largely concentrated in the southwestern part of the city. Fair enough. So, so I need to visit Hyderabad very quickly and again <laughs> to witness yeah, all they, of that. You see, a, you see a lot of change in last one and a half year. Okay. Uh, when you come this time, Kachibali, you can see a more new, newer roads built. Or under construction, the new flowers. I, I'll you take your that. word for it. I'll take your word for it. Uh, Mr. Nandikishore, so I'm just, before I come to you, I'm going to read out this graphic which has come from, for, you know, to us uh, from Lysis for us. Now, everyone is upgrading. So I'm going to first actually read out the 75 lakh to 2 crore, the 3 BHKs and the slightly premium localities, which are the ones which have seen the fastest sales. So there's Kokapet, which is over 1,000 units which have been sold. Uh, Gachi Bauli, of course, we keep talking about it. That is the high-tech city that we speak of. Kondapur, Kokatpalli and Miyapur. Now, under 50 lakhs, which is the affordable segment, your top five selling are Kompali, there's Bachupalli, there's Pantacheru, Kokatpalli and Rajendra Nagar. So these are some of the top selling markets. Uh, Mr. Nandikishore, where would you, you know, so... I, I know that even today, Gachiboli is very sought after. There's Kokapet, which is selling very heavily. But are there any uh, spots or micro markets that you would pick out as the future growth corridors? I think the Eastern Corridor, uh, which is the Uppal uh, Gatkeser Belt, that is going to be one of the hotspots uh, going forward, both in terms of pricing and also there are some of the top developers are moving into 
that location. And we are also seeing uh, some good traction in and around the airport uh, area, which again is uh, becoming a hot destination, particularly for villas and off late uh, many apartment projects have uh, started coming up there. So these are the two areas. And we are also looking at the belt from uh, airport to Medipatnam, which covers the uh, earlier industrial area of Gagan Pad and those locations. And uh, of course, uh, there are places like uh, Elbinagar and uh, beyond also, which are again uh, good spots where uh, we can see some traction and good growth. So Hyderabad is now, I can see there is a slight shift from the west towards other parts of the city also. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is that I think augurs well for the city as well. And one more important point I wanted to also make, you know, the price increase that we are also talking of is also largely cost push uh, price increase rather than demand pull because uh, the, uh, the developer margins haven't really, really improved much because it is made. Mm -hmm. The cost has gone up because of the uh, GST factor, because the GST input credit is no longer available to the developers. And also, the, as you know, the cost of in inputs have really, really gone high, right, from steel, cement, and electrical and everything. Mm -hmm. I agree on that. All right. So you're saying from the west now you can see a movement towards east and especially the around the airport. Uh, I mean, even from Gachiboli, actually reaching the airport had become very, very smooth because of the road or the ring road, as you call it. Uh, Mr. Reddy, your three top locations, you know, one is to give directions. But if you can just pick out three micro markets, which you think could be the ones to watch out for in the coming years. Yeah, one would, I would say Talapur would be a big uh, which has a uh, very uh, uh, a good connection to the financial district Gachiboli and to the airport. It's hardly two kilometers away from uh, uh, from the ORR. Uh, Narsinghi, it's already picked up. It's the, one of the top uh, thing right now. And uh, Upal is uh, having a lot of traction now and a lot of uh, good projects are coming uh, near and around Upal. These three places I would uh, take okay. any any As, of these three places. All right, uh, Veera Babu, your picks. Give me micro market names. Those are easier than for our audience to understand. So just I think uh, to, uh, as mentioned, uh, the eastern side, especially the Uppal, because of uh, TOD, the metro connectivity to the IT card is picking him. It gives a lot of cost advantage for the people who want to focus. I think might definitely bet somebody looking at really a reasonable cost, it can be Uppal. Somebody of close to walk to work or to be a close approximate to what's happening or in a premium segment, that's as mentioned, Gachibauli, uh, Narsinghi, and Coca Pay, those are the pockets which can look at that way. From an affordability perspective, a lot of secondary quarters in close proximity to these IT quarters are coming up. This place called uh, Gunla Pochimpali, Aminpur, Malapur, those can be still be in affordable locations where you can still get a bill of floors at 50 lakhs and below. So those are the pockets you can pick up. All right. Well, all of Hyderabad seems to be quite very affordable and under 50 lakhs is still quoting at under 4,000 rupees per square feet. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I mean, I must uh, say that I uh, this was the first city that I lived in after I got married. So I do have a soft corner, as they say, for Hyderabad. It is a city which is very welcoming to outsiders. So thanks again for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.